slew of polls this week show Democrats leading in key states. New Fox News polls show that in Arizona, incumbent Democrat Mark Kelly is actually up eight points over Trump-backed Republican Blake Masters. And in Wisconsin, Democratic nominee Mandela Barnes has a four-point lead over incumbent Ron Johnson, who's essentially a Trump acolyte at this point. And meanwhile, in Florida, University of North Florida polls shows this week that Democrat Val Demings is leading incumbent Marco Rubio by four. He's another Trump acolyte, and there are currently no black women in the Senate. These will be interesting races. The hits just keep on coming for Republicans in a year they thought would benefit them. The Click Political Report has now declared control of the Senate a toss-up and moved the Pennsylvania Senate race between Democrat John Fetterman and Republican Mehmet Oz to lean Democratic. Uh, keeping with Pennsylvania, the outlook is so bad, according to Rolling Stone, even the former president thinks his guy, Dr. Oz, will, quote, effing lose. Well, we might effing lose it if that doesn't happen. Joining me now is to get into all of this, Terrence Woodbury. He's a Democratic pollster and strategist, and Dean Obadala. He's host of the Dean Obadala Show on Sirius XM, and my longtime pal. Happy to have both you guys here. Uh, great to see you. Let's start out. There are some really interesting races um, I'm watching, Terrence. I do want to start out with uh, Wisconsin um, and Mandela Barnes and Ron Johnson. I mean, Ron Johnson has a slew of ridiculous statements, ridiculous policies. He's a Trump acolyte. Um, and Mandela Barnes, he's a young candidate. He's very thoughtful, very bright, very smart. Um, he was a lieutenant governor. He has government experience. This will be a very interesting race to watch. What are you hearing? So thank you so much for having me, Tiffany. And in complete transparency, Mandela is a client at Hit Strategies. Uh, and so we are we are seeing exactly what, what, what we're seeing across the country. That's there has been a Democratic boost, a Democratic bounce in the past couple of weeks, and Democratic candidates are taking are, are, are benefiting from that. And candidates like Mandela Barnes represent uh, uh, the, the diversity and the, the, the enthusiasm in the party and, frankly, is overperforming uh, uh, Joe Biden and generic Democrats in Wisconsin, a candidate with, with uh, executive experience as lieutenant governor and with legislative experience, uh, really demonstrating that uh, that millennials need need diverse voices in the Senate. Millennials now the biggest voting bloc in America, representing only three percent of the U.S. Senate. And so uh, I think I think Mandela, uh, candidates like Mandela are really demonstrating uh, what can happen when we put forth a diverse uh, uh, and a, a robust and robust and diverse slate of candidates. Yeah, well, we're watching, and Dean uh, Terrence made really good points there about Wisconsin, and even though politics are local, there's still a national narrative to this race, uh, as control for the Senate is up for grabs, a toss-up, according to Cook Political Report. Um, the administration had a pretty good week. Um, they had some accomplishments this week. I want you to take a listen to Ron Klain, and then we'll talk about messaging on the other side. Mm -hmm. We now have a presidency where the president has delivered the largest economic recovery plan since Roosevelt, the largest infrastructure plan since Eisenhower, the most judges confirmed since Kennedy, the second largest health care bill since Johnson, and the largest climate change bill in history. Dean, how do you feel about the messaging coming out of the White House? Again, they, it's good that they're touting uh, some of their successes. Right. Um, who are they touting these uh, messages to, do you think? Democrats and messaging don't usually go well together. Like, it sort of happens organically that they find it. Uh, here's the truth. I think talking about the accomplishments are great. This week, they signed the law of the Inflation Reduction Act, which will help my mother, who's a senior on Medicare. They're going to cap prescription drug price at $2,000. This will help my mom and over 60 million Americans. That's important. Talking about where we are in unemployment, 3.5 percent, tying the lowest in 50 years. And that's because of Biden plan that we passed last year with COVID relief. But there's another part of this, Tiffany. That's GOP extremism. You just been talking about that. That's got to be part of the Democratic message. Look what we're seeing. They are literally academically embracing fascism as a party, and I mean that in the terms of what that means academically. It's term using acquisition or retention of political party power by threats of violence or violence. There's a CBS poll, Tiffany, recently. Nearly 60 percent of Republicans, nearly 60 percent, don't view January 6th as terrorism. They view it as an act defending freedom. You've got Donald Trump, the leader of their party, you have Republicans imposing their religious beliefs as law to oppress women. The Taliban should sue them for trademark infringement at this point. And you got yeah. them banning books, banning Black History Month, and the list goes on and on. This is an extremist party. So Democrats, talk about your accomplishments. They're real. But don't forget, 
amplify the GOP extremism, because that's very real and it's right in our face and it's frightening. Yeah, I mean, Z makes a good point there, Terrence. And when you think about the idea, the concept that Kevin McCarthy, who has completely lost his spine, completely given in to, to Trump, despite their little exchange around January 6th, where he actually said to him, allegedly, uh, reportedly, who the F do you think you're talking to? Um, when Trump told him, well, maybe the people care more about the election than you do. Um, all that went out the window. They're all bowing down to this MAGA king. So I wonder what messaging um, that the people need to put out there, Terrence, to warn uh, voters of this is what a dystopian America will look like if one you don't participate if you abstain or two you vote for the uh, you vote down a Republican ticket absolutely Tiffany I think Dean is absolutely right we have to do both we have to take credit for the progress that has been made but we also have to demonstrate that the threat uh, that Republic the existential threat threat that Republicans Chase, this is why we have been promoting this message of unfinished business, that Democratic voters have unfinished business in 2022. Because while we may have made progress on a, on a Democratic agenda, while we've made progress on, prog on progressive priorities, we have unfinished business fulfilling many of those promises. And, and similarly, while we, made, while we may have defeated Trump in 2020, we obviously have unfinished business defeating Trumpism. And we have to do both. But what we have to be careful with, as I was listening to Ron Klein, as we take a, a, a credit for the progress that has been made, that we don't seem to be waving a victory, a, a mission accomplished flag here, that we acknowledge that people are still in pain and that while we are making progress, uh, there's, still, there's still a lot of work to do. And so uh, we do have to acknowledge the fact that uh, that, that, that Donald Trump appears to be leading a, a crime syndicate um, and, and, and that, we, that, that that chaos, that dis, the yeah. disorienting chaos of the Trump administration is not what we want to bring back. But I, I think that he's doing us a favor here. And the best thing that we could do is put Donald Trump back on the ballot in 2022 because it's the only way to defeat him before 2024. Yeah, and I, you know, I think uh, it's such a good point about um, the younger voters that you were talking about, uh, that the space that millennials take up. Uh, but we can't forget Gen Z voters. A lot of them are eligible um, to vote this year, so definitely reach out to them. Dean, you know this very well that races are often won on the margins. Um, yet we mm -hmm. see time and again that so many communities are not being contacted by political parties. The AAPI community um, just recently released a study there that most have not been contacted by a political party. We've seen the Latino community shift back and forth again many haven't been contacted by a political party uh, what do you think it will take for both these parties to recognize that the rising majority will soon become the people to determine how this government is shaped well I hope Republicans never notice that and just keep playing to the base that they're playing to which is shrinking for our side we have to get out there I have representatives of various communities all the time on my radio show and we talk about that sometimes they are reaching out the message is getting heard other times it's not and they have to go where the people are they have to go to their community and not just around election time, because that's the biggest slam I hear from all different minority communities. We see the elected officials around election time. Be a part of the community. Be there. Be there for them. Help them. Not just when it's time to cast a ballot, but when you need yeah. other things for your community to help. So, look, I, yeah. I think it's time. Democrats should need to do more. Yeah. Uh, I know a little something about that radio show you hosted. I used to be on it a lot with you. Uh, but we'll yes. talk more about that on the other side. So don't go anywhere at home because Terrence and Dean are sticking around to play Who Won the Week. That's coming up next, so don't go anywhere. I got a good one.